Hi Patriots, we are diving into part two of how to fight back against the coming commie apocalypse. We know that the best way to fight against the system that is trying to control everything, literally everything, is to make it so you are completely independent of that system. Again, they cannot control you if you don't need them. And how are they going to control everything? By making it extremely difficult and inconvenient to not live in their system. They're going to make sure that dissenters like you and me can't do anything without a special passport. The passport is already in effect in some countries like Israel, where they are telling their citizens that they will be left behind if they don't opt in. Here's an example of how they're going to require your kids to have a special pass to attend school. Mom, I'm scared about going back to school. I don't want to get sick, and I don't want to get you and Dad sick. Our scientists tell us there are three things we must do to stay safe. Wear masks, make sure we social distance, and wash our hands. And now, your school, with the help of Microsoft Corporation, has created another. Introducing Daily Pass, your exclusive ticket for safely going back to school. Each week, you can schedule your free on-campus COVID test. The results are displayed in your Daily Pass. And if you choose to take your test off-campus, you can post the results in your Daily Pass. And the moment vaccinations are available, you'll simply be able to schedule yours through your daily pass. But the real magic is your daily health check. Just answer a few simple health questions every day, and like magic, your entrance ticket appears. Welcome back! The mental health of our children is on the decline, their development is being suppressed, but hey, let's keep muzzling our children so we can make Microsoft more money. We also have the airlines begging the government for advice on how they'd like to restrict air travel for those that don't have their COVID pass, and some public venues are now refusing to allow non-vaccinated people into their events. Think about how that will affect your ability to socialize, to travel, to see family, or conduct business. If you don't opt in, you will be left out, and this is their new weapon of control. One year ago, life was still completely normal. Strangers were friendly and smiling at each other. Your kids were in school and playing on sports teams. You were dining in restaurants and attending concerts. Now we have a mostly nonviolent civil war going on between the maskers and the non-maskers, rising unemployment, falling hope, and two weeks to flatten the curve still hasn't ended. Bottom line, what makes you think that the temporary passports to participate in society are gonna end soon? They're not going to, and the powers that be are using this weapon of exclusion and inconvenience to implement their systems of control and surveillance. You know what's probably going to happen? They're going to lift all these restrictions and mandates and make you think that everything's going to return to normal, then all of a sudden everything's going to get shut down again because there's going to be a rumor about a new strain. And then they're going to keep continuing this cycle until society is conditioned enough to accept mandates and limitations as a normal process of life that's necessary for our safety. Just having a moment right now. Um, my first video I ever made was called Gun Bunny Rehab. All I wanted to do was make funny gun skits like the boys were doing, and now I'm making videos about building an army against the onslaught of global communism. So I'm just having a little moment. <laughs> right now. Crazy times. Annoying, crazy times. So as we discuss these tough subjects, try to find the fun and adventure in them. And remember, would you rather be a comfortable zombie who's lulled to sleep every night by Netflix or a warrior who takes a stand and fights for freedom and truth? Because the new reality is you can't be both. All right, so our next battle tool we'll be using to fight against what's coming is setting up our army. What I mean by that is this is not a battle you can fight alone, so we need to set up a trusted network of people that we can do this new life with. This will be the foundation of your success, so please pay attention to this video's message. Think of this task like it's Red Dawn the movie meets Little House on the Prairie, but you're with all your trusted friends. You can try to be all lone man off-grid on your own, but let me present you with a question. What scenario do you think will be best for this patriot when he chooses to live against the state-mandated system? This one. Or this one. Small groups of about 8 to 10 people linking with other small groups and then extending outward is the ideal situation for a system we can thrive in. These groups have many advantages like strength and protection in numbers, mutual defense, the sharing of costs, skills, resources, knowledge, experience, and relationships with key suppliers in other groups. So this is how the ideal setup 
works. My husband and I go and we meet up with three other couples that have the same foundational beliefs as us in regards to what's coming down the road and our values. We start having regular meetings. We talk about what assets we're going to bring to the table. We talk about setting up our supply chain. We talk about what we're going to do if certain situations happen and we keep planning from there. Then we start linking with other similar groups in our immediate area. And if there are none, we teach our circle of friends to set up their own groups like we did. We then do the same thing on a bigger level. From group to group, we see what we can bring to the table, make plans and work on our mutual supply chain and how we're gonna protect and help one another. Then it grows from there to where your area is soon covered with different cells that are working together to get to a point where we have our own exchange system that doesn't require the government's assistance in any way. Now, is the government going to like us doing this? Uh, no. We will have to fight to keep our way of life and that will require risk, sacrifice, and strategy. But here's my sales pitch. You can either choose to make the required changes in your life to preserve your freedom or they will choose a new life for you. Here's the difference. If you choose, you will be living with freedom even if it's more dangerous and uncomfortable. You will still have individual rights, your unique talents will be lived out, your children will not be slaves, right will still be right and wrong will be wrong. Love and justice will live on and you will enjoy the fruits of your moral character and hard work. Truth will reign and you will be free to worship God as you choose. If they choose for you, you will be a slave to their system. Eat what they tell you to eat and receive mandatory medical jabs whenever they deem necessary. You will be living in George Orwell's 1984, where words and thoughts are outlawed and punishment will come when you speak up for morality and truth. You will own nothing, you will have no privacy, and you will not be able to worship God or practice your religion. There will be nothing to have pride in except for your level of compliance, which will include reporting the non-compliance of your friends, family, and the people around you. Their system will end up with 100% control over the people that choose to opt in. If your mind wants to go to the place of, well, your plan seems kind of extreme and their plan really doesn't seem all that bad, please name me one example of totalitarianism or communism that ended up great for the people and didn't end up killing millions of people and making them suffer. <laughs> we need to get our heads wrapped around the fact that our world is now different. And right now is the time where we need to take action steps in order to try and stop their agenda from advancing. So let's talk more about setting up our network. An idea to consider is being willing to share land with multiple families in order to set up a self-sustaining community. You have your own home, but you work together in close proximity to live independently from their system. Imagine sharing a common piece of land, the work and responsibility of that land, and then common assets like tools or machinery. Betty's got the beekeeping going on, Bob's got the mechanical side of things, the Millers are doing the greenhouse garden stuff, and at night you can all come together, sit by the fire, share stories, a meal, look at the stars, and then sleep well knowing you chose not to be a controlled slave. Now, I am not talking about some weird naked hippie commune camp here, okay? Everyone needs to be clothed in these situations. Besides, where would you put your holster and hide your weapons if you weren't wearing clothing? Don't answer that. Now, living in a community or group or network has tremendous highs and benefits, but it can also be very difficult. Everyone has their own life experiences, issues and expectations, and it's much like living in a family. Problems and arguments are gonna arise, and when that happens, you know, not everyone's gonna love each other all the time. But the more prepared you are and the more you communicate with each other, the better things will work out and the more fun it will be. On my website, on my newsletter and downloads page, I have a resource for you called Prepping Special. That page has a bunch of information regarding how to find a group, how to start having meetings with your group, what to discuss, training resources, and some relational advice for working with your group. I also have a PDF document on that page that you can print out and take to your meetings to start working from. That page is private, so you will need a password to access the information. If you sign up for my email list, the password will be sent to you. People from places like Cuba, Venezuela, and Eastern Europe have lived under totalitarian governments and they see clearly what's going on in the United States and around the world. They see all the signs of the coming control and they know that there is nowhere left to go. Nobody is coming to help us. We have to do the work and we have to do this work together. And the best thing about this whole process is that you get to name your group. So here are a few suggestions.
Remember, have fun in this process. Think of it as an adventure. Be smart in the way you communicate with each other in your group. I, again, I recommend the Wire app for texting and just be aware of who and what is around you when you're communicating and making plans. Thank you so much for watching, Patriots. Please pass along this video to those you know that need to set up a group. Go to my website, get that information. It is, it is detailed and specific, and it will help you be successful in these groups that you are setting up. If you want to support me further, you can always buy a t-shirt or something. And as always, Father, please grant us the wisdom and discernment that we need to be successful against our enemies. In Jesus' name, amen. I will be back shortly with another video on how to fight back against our enemies. Thank you so much again for watching. I'm Good Patriot. I'll see you again soon, and God bless.